Welcome back to the show. Dana, cheers. Cheers to you. I had some students of mine this week mm. uh, tell me they also were worshipers of Diet Coke. I felt so seen. Such a good segue felt- to the topic. But was it normalizing for your love of Diet Coke? Yes, yes. I felt mm. seen and like, yeah. It was nice. Yeah, I noticed a difference between us though. Which is, um, I do like my can, and you like I do your cans. bottle. I do cans when I'm doing podcasts up here in my office, though, because I knock cans over when I yes. have all this other equipment. So up here, which, I do the bottles, <laughs> and downstairs, I do the cans. I see, which actually happens, because if you, I don't remember which episode it was, but did, Dana yeah. did knock over her bottle, and all you heard in the background was, Psh, and I was like, <laughs> oh, let's pause. <laughs> Because Dana hadn't put the yeah. lid on fully. Yeah. On, yeah. yeah. Now back yeah, onto her diet Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have like the capped ones for traveling and when I have uh-huh. to worry about spillage. Yeah. So it's smart. a great example, and, though. Like my wife has yeah. helped me so much with the normalizing thing. We're talking about the Olympics are on right now. And, you know, Olympics. it's hard to not compare, like, probably to the 0.001 amount of people that can do these amazing things these people do. Yeah. And I was telling her about, you know, I don't have binocular vision because I had a crossed eye when I was younger. So depth perception and then the proprioceptive issues with autism. I'm like, oh, no wonder I gravitated towards things that were like single person sports. It didn't require a lot of hand, eye-hand coordination, like bicycling and swimming and that kind of thing. Um, and I said, you know, she's helped me a lot when I would just knock things over or drop things because growing up it was always, oh, Dana, be more careful don't move so fast. What's wrong with you? You know? Yeah. And, yeah. and so not only having it normalized, like, well, pe- people spill things. It's okay. But even as I explored and learned more about my neurology and my spatial awareness and ability, it normalized it for me. I'm like, yeah. if I'm just saying, this is how my brain processes that stuff. It's different than other yeah. people's Yeah. that normalizes it. Right. And then it, it, it yeah there's other things that can sort of fall out from that. Like, then I have to get like, it, do I need to grieve the ability that I don't have the neurology someone else has this, that, and the other thing. But also just like, for me, the biggest thing was it alleviated a lot of shame. It's like, it doesn't matter how hard I try. Mm-hmm. It's not going to go away. Right. So I can do some practicing things. Like we have this one little ball of the dogs that we do like the, that we throw it against the wall and it kind of comes up and you can catch it. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's, it, yeah. I practiced, and then my wife's like, "Well, why don't you use both hands instead of one?" And that never occurred to me. I'm like, oh no, I'm supposed to throw it with my right hand. I don't know, you know. So that like that percept of, but that or she said, "Or use the bigger one that's red because it's easier to see." So I that yeah. is, it did improve, but I'll never be a major leaguer, you know, ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that that sense of. We do a lot of that kind of work in therapy, right? And even on the podcast, we've gotten some responses back where people are like, oh, I thought it was just me. And normalizing, you know, the word normal is derived from norm, which was really just that bell curve. And it's where the majority of people fall under that bell curve, knowing that there's a lot of people out in both other parts of the curve. And so norming is like, you know, societal norms and things people tend to follow and cultural norms and blah, de blah. And if you're not, if you don't fit into that, you can feel like an outlier, literally, if we're talking about the normal curve or people have talked about felt like an alien mm-hmm. or I was the weird kid or I am the weird person or I knock things over. It doesn't matter how careful I am, you know, all those kinds of things. In therapy, when someone comes in and says, I have this thought about something, and you say, well, that's understandable. It's just so validating, right? It's normalizing it. Yes, yes. I, you know, and, you know, oftentimes, because I think we're also playing around with ableism, yes. the idea and concept of ableism. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, uh, because this, there, these are crossovers, right? Yeah. It's like, a lot of times you and I are saying, uh, don't, you know, 
actually, it, we're not comparing to Norm. Don't, like, don't compare. Like, actually, yeah. don't do that. You know, let's kind of <clears throat> lean into it, embrace it. And you've already done that already. You've already compared yourself to everybody. Yeah. You know, uh, such a common... Whenever I, I speak to um, a young person or, or even a teen or a college age student who has never been diagnosed with like a learning difference or oh, a learning disorder, yeah. this is the common – this is always the flag that that go. I go, oh, like it, it – I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to look at this for you. It's always – I always worked harder. I always felt like I worked harder than everyone else and I never achieved what they achieved. Yeah. Yeah. Why is everything come so easy for everyone? Yeah. Why is it so hard for me? You know, it's they're these... the Olympic athletes and that client isn't, <laughs> right. you yeah. know, so it's like so interesting. <clears throat> and so you already have this sense where I'm different. I'm there's something wrong with me. Right. All of those shame and, and negative labels yeah. that we yeah. that we know um get put onto ourselves a lot of times. Dana and I, before we hit the record button, we're talking about self-gaslighting or, yeah. you know, when a lot of us who, you know, are victim have been victims of narcissism, right? You, oh it's like, God. oh, the narcissist is gone, but the narrative sure isn't. The self-narrative right. sure isn't, right? It's still there. There is, I think that uh, the word validating mm -hmm. is exactly what that is, right? It's like, oh, like you get me. Yeah. You understand me. You understand this lived experience that I've had. Yeah. And that in and of itself is just, I think, such a therapeutic and reparative moment. Absolutely. And I think that that's one of the really good things about social media that uh, in my field, it's mostly criticism, but I think that's one of the really good things that you can see other people having that experience. And we've talked about kind of like meme therapy in here. You read this meme and you're like, oh my God, that person nailed it. And when you show it to somebody else, like I'll show some of those memes to my wife and she's like, that's not funny. I'm like, it's oh, right down the time. It's effing <laughs> you, hysterical. I don't, I right? don't think you said the whole thing. <laughs> Didn't say it all day. But that sense of like, uh, it's, it's validation. It's being, it's being seen, but not just being seen in a good way. You're seeing yourself without... <clears throat> like you, you were talking about all these negative layers that you've had added on top of it throughout the years, those shame messages that you got, you know, whether it's working really hard in school and never being able to achieve what other people are achieving. Well, why is that? And can we help that? I've had so many students that um, have gotten accommodations and then lo and behold, all of a sudden they blossom. Um, yeah. And sometimes they haven't even needed, like for example, extra time on something. Knowing it's there has alleviated so much anxiety that yep. now they can have clarity. So there's all these <clears throat> pieces around, but the stigma of being different is real, right? We humans yeah. tend to push out to the fringes things that are different than us. It, we've talked about this before too. It, it's one of the things that I am hopeful uh, with younger generations is they're growing up to, to not do that as much in our culture. I think social media has a lot of harmful effects, sure. Um, for an undeveloped brain, right, or developing brain. But it also has, you know, the, this is a generation that has said being transgender is fine, being non-binary is fine, being neurodivergent is fine. It's just who you are. Tell me about you. I want to learn about you, right? Yeah. Whereas when you and I went to school, it really was like oh. the Mean Girls movie. It was like these factions and you kept to yourself and you didn't interrelate and there was damage that was, we flung arrows at each other. And it, not that that never happens, you know, but the sense of finding community, I have so much, I found myself yesterday recommending to someone that I did an assessment on, um, because I have so many clients that go to Reddit and subreddit because it's not identified and people will just sort of throw out these ideas of this is how I do it. Anybody else? And so people will be like, oh, hell yes. You know, and they'll, they'll I say love those Reddit. things. Yeah. <laughs> I love In a way that, yeah, that's so much more, there's so much more free than even social media because your name isn't on it and you're not, you know, that kind of thing. There's more yeah. acceptance when you're in a group like that. People are going to a Reddit page about not missing people to talk about one of our previous episodes. And they're like, oh, I don't right. either. What's the scoop there? We are in a position as therapists, you know, we, we wield a lot of power, right? when we normalize things or me as a 
I have yet to assess somebody, knock on wood, who comes to me that says, I think I might be autistic that hasn't been yet. And it's not that I'm a bias, like looking forward. They've done all this research. They're pretty sure, but they need like that professional, you know, put together a test battery and do it. And then it's just like, yeah, you're right. Um, so that is that sense of validation and um, normalizing it for them right? Whatever the need is. And so other people are saying, I don't need that. I, it's fine for me to know. Everybody's different. Um, but we as humans tend to want to clump in the middle and have everybody be the same. And when you're able to normalize something, especially if it's an outline thing, it's huge. It makes every yeah. bit of difference. Yeah. Yeah. It, and I think it's, it's one of, it's, it's a power tool for a therapist oh, to yeah. be able yeah. to reflect Mm -hmm. um, someone's experience so that they feel heard and understood and seen mm -hmm. and not judged. Um, and that sometimes it's like to say, wow, that, that it, it's like, it, it's like, you know, using normalization incorrectly, it can be minimizing. So yeah. <laughs> You well, everybody do does that. that. Everybody's autistic, right? That's a minimizing. Right. Plot. And so it's yeah. it's not so easy. I feel like it's this concept that yeah. we talk about a lot, but that it's actually a little bit difficult to apply and use correctly. Because yeah. there's some things that we don't want to normalize, right? Because that could lead mm -hmm. to minim like that could lead to minimalization. Um oh, it, it can also uh, lead to colluding. Yeah, right. Exactly. So yeah. this is a really tricky place, but I think when it, it lands, it lands really surely. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it feels right. And, and as therapists, when we don't know, we toss things out at people and say, you know, yeah. let's let, I'm going to spitball this. I'm going to play around with this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell me if it hits the mark. Yeah. Right? right. It's like, it's like, help me find the target for you so that yeah. I'm attentively and thoughtfully with intention trying mm -hmm. to understand this thing. And yeah. I find that most of the autistics that I work with, they're very, very, it's important to use the right word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, that they want me to use the right word. If I reflect something and it's off by a millimeter, yeah. And I'm so glad that we have this kind of relationship. They'll yeah. correct me. It's not that, yeah. Gwen. It's oh, this. Say, and it's like, it's oh, not yeah. quite that. This is a better, right? right? Yes. This yeah. this example is a better example. This this one better describes my experience. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, yeah. wow, like that's fantastic. I'm so yeah. glad that you trust me enough to not yeah. only speak up. Yeah. Because I'm not going to have an ego about it. Because I really desperately, deeply want to know like what yeah. that difference yeah, is. Yeah, because I'll so. even ask that too and say, okay, that if I'm not sure why that word is better, I might even say, can I don't want to make an assumption because that word means something to me. Yeah. Tell me what that, why that's a better word. And it really is about that getting to know you and having someone articulate it better. And that's all validating, you know, normalizing. To me, yeah. if a human is having any experience it's within the realm of human experience. But we, you know, there are fringe things. Um, I was talking to my class last week about all humans are capable of killing another human. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, I said, it, it's circumstances that have led up to that, all these things piling on top of each other. And then it's like this kindling thing. Um, and it, all the right things add up, right? It's, so it's less, it's in the tail, thank God, but it still is human behavior, right? And so how do you then, and I'm thinking about, I've never worked in a prison setting, but I've supervised tons of students who do. And it becomes something like, how do I now work with this guy who's in here for 40 years for something really activating like rape? And I'm like, oh God, you know, you've got to go to understanding that brain. What led to that? How do you feel about yeah. it now? You know, what happened in your history that got you there. And almost always, it isn't like this person who has stayed with this mindset. It really is this mindset that gets created and then the circumstances set up in just a way. And then if, you, if you've ever had a road rage or gotten so frustrated with something, you threw it, but it lasts a little longer, right? It's almost always something like that. And then after the fact, they're like, oh crap, mostly because they're in prison, but still, right? 
if you have that curious mindset, just like what is in there, um, rather than foreclosing on learning about that person with the judgment, that's where you get that being seen, that validating, that quote, when we say normalizing, we're not saying give permission for bad behavior. We're saying, see you and have it. How does this make sense to you? What might be going on, right? Yeah. Now that you know your autistic and proprioception is an issue, oh, it all makes sense. Okay, now I can like be kinder to myself, right? That's yes. Sort of what we're mm-hmm. Yeah, and that when you understand the context mm-hmm. of someone's thought patterns or feelings, you're like any person under those circumstances, I can understand like that. That's normalization, right? I can understand yeah. under those circumstances why that happened. Right? Yeah. When you know that person, like I can tell right now that light on your hallway, and I'm assuming it's your daughter mm-hmm. walking, but is driving you crazy, right? Yeah. So that sort of thing, like in my growing up, if I had something like that, I would have gotten teased about it. Oh, what's your problem? Let it go. It's like, you don't understand how itchy that feels, right? Oh, and so to say to that person, word. this is something I think my really my wife helped me more than anybody, really. Um, and we always say it's a Montana thing because it's like, oh, they're just like, laid back and it's all good. Yeah. She'd say something like, I see that that's really bothering you. Yeah. There's nothing we can do about it right now. Or yeah, move your yeah. camera. Just It'll like, be okay. Yeah. I, I see yeah. you in your angst. I get it. Do you need anything? <laughs> yeah. Right? I need to go, move the camera. Go, go solve it. Go. Yeah. Yeah, Let's exactly. take a moment. Yeah. 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 And that's like it, younger kids, like you're talking about when you're in those settings like school, they, they're not afforded that luxury. Yeah. Right. Teachers like, oh, I can't. It's going to be pandemonium in my class. But is it really? Right. Yeah. The, the autism level up people on Facebook, they were presenting somewhere and one of them, there was a glitch in the technology, but she had to go in the podium thing to do something with the wires. And then it started working. And then she just stayed down there and was talking from under there. And they, I love and it. It was, a, it was a thing about, you know, that's what they were there for. And they're like, here's a really good example. And she's like, this is so much nicer down here. So is it really hurting anybody? No, it's fine. People could still hear. To me, it yeah. made it more rich because it's like, oh, look at that. Yeah. If a kid does that and wants to sit there reading in the corner while they're foot tapping, awesome. Right. That's you know, that validation it- piece. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree. I um, you you brought up like um, supervising your supervisees in the prison in a, in a prison mm-hmm. kind of context. Mm-hmm. And when I in, in my grad training, I was um, for a year. I did um, juvenile hall. Mm-hmm. I did a rotation in juvenile hall and a probationary a probational boot camp, mm. and it really put a different spin on crime for me. Yeah. And yeah. because the the probationary boot camp kids they 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 had a very kind of I, I would for the lack of a better word militaristic kind of level system where mm. it was like you earned your privileges and then you could right. go home on the weekend wow. uh if if you hit a certain level. Yeah. And I saw a few things happen. One is they sabotaged their their leveling up because they didn't want to go home, but that wasn't like uh, said yeah. outright. The other yeah. is that they would eat the most amount of food I've ever seen on a Friday and eat the most amount on a Monday because they were never fed on, over the weekend mm-hmm. or they were left on to their own devices. Mm-hmm. But the stories that I heard, which were absolutely heartbreaking, <sighs> you yeah. understand – and I understood very clearly yep. why they did what they did and why they yep. were there all yep. the way to, you know, in juvenile hall, which was different because I did solitary confinement. I mm. like talk mm. about cutting your clinical chops, yeah. <laughs> which was that a 15 year old young man was my first day there, a 15 year old young man was in a padded room because he was hallucinating that he was on fire. Oh, God. And I will never, ever forget my thought of, isn't like this the time where we sedate somebody? Like, just, right? Just like, why, why are we allowing, why, why is this happening? And, and learning about undiagnosed 
learning differences and brain profiles in there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not like there, it was just so interesting. It really just did yeah, put yeah. A, a different spin. And it really, in yeah. many ways, my normalization muscle was really, yeah. I think, honed in in that setting. Yeah. Nothing um, like and it's, someone in psychosis to really yeah. draw your attention to their brain yeah. is doing this to them. Why are we why are we, you know, putting them in a cage like an animal who's yeah. just been hit by a car? Why are we not helping this thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it was awful. And it was, a, I, I didn't, um, I was the first practicum student in my program to not be accepted into the program <laughs> oh. that I had, that I had originally applied for, which was oh, gotcha. a school district. Uh -oh, was to do testing okay. in a school district. Yeah. And I did later find out that they denied me because they thought that I would advocate more for the student than the district, which, <laughs> spoiler alert, I would have. <laughs> That's my way. why my wife quit teaching first grade yeah. was because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I got the only position that was left over, which was uh -huh. juvenile hall and probationary boot camp. And it was the best thing that yeah. ever happened to me yeah. clinically yeah. Because yep. it opened the depths of my soul in these <laughs> vast ways Absolutely. Absolutely. of holy cow, like we yeah. are the accumulation of our experiences, yeah. right? You know. So yeah. anyway, um, can I say one more? Yes. Point? Yeah. Based on all that, to wrap it up. <clears throat> yeah. We're saying having things normalized, having someone um, see you you seeing them seeing you and you saying it's okay it's who you are is so reparative i mean you really can't underestimate that and i think that that's for me what the neurodiversity movement has been you know if the neurodiversity movement hadn't been happening i probably never would know even still that i'm autistic and yeah. so to have that and have that frame of things that it's like the rubik's cube mine was constantly the wrong colors and i finally got it all i'm like oh so that in any way you can get that is unbelievably healing and, and sense-making for your own brain. And it's a marvelous thing. Yep. Context is everything, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, yeah. it's so helpful. And, um, and you know, it, it's allowed, it, it's, well, it's brought us here to this point of being able mm -hmm. to have these kinds of conversations yep. um, and hoping that it resonates with someone, even one person of just, wow, like, that was really helpful for me. Like that yeah. was reparative for me. You know, the these right. types of of conversations are supposed to to open and be more expansive and embracing than anything else. Yeah. So that's right. yeah, I'm glad exactly. we get to do it. All yeah. right, everyone. Well, um, be good to you. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye, everybody.